In this video, we're going to take a look at the facial bones. Our first, oops, sorry, our first structure is right here. It's called the vomer bone. Together with the perpendicular plate above, it forms a wall uh, that forms our nasal passages. If we look posteriorly, we can see them and these passages that are formed are actually called koana. This open area here is one of the koana. And again, from the posterior view, uh, it's almost entire, or it is entirely the vomer. From an anterior view, the vomer forms the bottom half of the wall and the perpendicular plate forms the superior half. Uh, the next structure is the inferior nasal concha. You have a left and a right. You can also see the middle nasal concha here, but that is a part of the ethmoid bone. And then we can see maybe, uh, not quite, there's a superior nasal concha up there as well. That's also a part of the ethmoid bone. Just the inferior nasal concha is one of the facial bones. Here on the bridge of our nose, we have two nasal bones, a right and a left. Posterior to that, we have the maxillary bone, which we will come back to because there's quite a few structures there to discuss. Behind the maxillary bone, we have the lacrimal bone. You have a left and a right macro, uh, lacrimal bone. Um, there is actually a gland that sits here called the lacrimal gland that produces our tears. And that sits right next to this bone, which is the lacrimal bone. Back to the maxillary bones, we have a few processes to talk about. Remember, a process is a part of a bone that touches another bone. The process is located right here. That is the frontal process of the maxillary bone. This area here. The palatine process we can see from below. Let's go ahead and remove this. So here is the left maxilla and the right maxilla uh, touching the left palatine bone and the right palatine bone. The portion of, let me see if I can, here we go. The portion of the maxilla that's touching the palatine bone is called the palatine process. So this area here is the palatine process of the maxillary bone. Now if we go around back to the front, we have several alveolar processes. There's one alveolar process for each tooth. This is the region of the maxillary bone that comes in contact with your teeth, and those are called alveolar processes. All this area in here is alveolar processes. The last structure on the maxilla is called the anterior nasal spine. It is right here. This structure here, if you pictured um, this man or person, I should say, with a nose right here. Oh, poor guy, I gave him a big nose. Um, the bottom aspect of the nose would be aligned here with the anterior nasal spine. We do have a posterior nasal spine, which is our next structure. It's actually a part of the palatine bone. Let's remove the mandible. And we can see here the posterior nasal spine. It's on the palatine bone. Let's go back to the anterior view. Um, in other videos, we have talked a bit about the zygomatic bone, uh, sp specifically the processes of the temporal, frontal, and maxillary bones that make contact with it.
Um, there are processes on the zygomatic bone as well, named for the bones that they touch. So this would be the temporal process of the zygomatic bone, the frontal process of the zygomatic bone, and the maxillary process of the zygomatic bone. And then again, this is the zygomatic bone in green. Temporal process, frontal process, maxillary process. And that brings us to our second to last facial bone, the mandible. I'm going to hide everything else to make this a bit easier. Uh, so we have three structures located right next to each other. We have the condyle, the head, and the neck. Now, if you're looking at this, the head and the neck sort of makes sense. This would be the head here, and then the neck would be the thinner place down below, just like our head. We have the the roundish head and a thinner neck below the head. The condyle is the actual articular surface on top of the head. So if we're gonna use that same analogy, we'd kind of consider it maybe the scalp. If this whole structure is the head, then specifically, sorry, the smooth area right on top that makes contact with the mandibular fossa would be the mandibular condyle, which sits on top of the mandibular head, which sits on top of the mandibular neck. All right, and in front of those structures, we have the coronoid process. Uh, if you watch more videos, you're going to see that there are a lot of structures that are spelled almost like this one. There's actually a other coronoid process on the ulna. There's a coracoid process on the scapula. There's a conoid tubercle on the clavicle. So it gets a little frustrating, but these are the coronoid processes of the mandible right there, left and right. In between the coronoid process and the head and neck of the mandible, we have the mandibular notch, a left mandibular notch and a right. All right, these next few structures are just sort of regions of the mandible. It's not a completely clear cut. You know, it's not like the proximal seven or, you know, proximal four inches is the ramus and the distal two inches is the body. It's just sort of right about here. We call this area the ramus of the mandible and we call the distal portion the body of the mandible. And then we call this area right here the angle of the mandible. And that is it for the facial bones video. Thank you guys.